One way of scheduling real-time processes is to use the static priority policy with preemption. So each process will be assigned a priority and this will be based on the inverse of its period. That means on its rate. We know that a real-time process is periodic. So it is occurring at every p intervals of time and the rate of this real-time process is the inverse of the period, so 1 upon p. Now the priority will be assigned based on the inverse of its period. So if the period of the process is short, that means that process is going to occur very frequently and it will require the CPU very frequently at short intervals of time. So such processes which are going to enter the system at short intervals of time, they will be given a higher priority. Then periods which are having a longer unit of time, processes which are having longer periods, they will be given lower priority. That means their rate of arrival in the system is going to be after longer periods of time, their rate is less. So they will be given a lower priority. What, what is the rationale behind it? That we assign the higher priority to tasks that require the CPU more often. That means they are entering the system very frequently. We also assume that the processing time of the process is same for each CPU burst. That means when it first arrives in the system, it takes time t for the CPU, then when it comes next after a p interval of time, then again it will require for t time only, then again when it will come in the system after p units of time, again it will require the CPU for t time only. That means we are assuming that every time the CPU burst for that process is going to be the same. Suppose there are two processes p1 and p2 and for process p1 the period is 50 that means it is coming in the system after every 50 time units. So suppose it was in the system at time t0 and then it will come again in the system at time 50 because its period is 50 and then again it will enter the system at time 100 and so on. So after every 50 units of time, this process is going to enter the system. Similarly, we have a process P2 whose time period is 100. So if P2 is available in the system at time 0, then again after 100 time units, it will enter the system again. Also assume that for P1, the CPU burst time required is 20 time units and for P2 the CPU burst time required is 35 time units. Now assume that the deadline for each process requires that it completes its CPU burst by start of its next period. That means if P1 is being scheduled its next deadline is the time when it will arrive again in the system. That means at time 50 because we know it is going to arrive at time 50 again. That means P1 has to be completed before time 50. Once it arrives over here, again it has to be completed before time 100. Similarly for P2, once it is there in the system, it has to be completed before its arrival. That means that is its deadline. It is going to arrive at 100 time unit again. That means it has to be completed before time 100. So let's see, suppose if we schedule P2 first and that means if we are assigning P2 a higher priority than P1, what will happen? So P2 will be given the, should, uh, the processor first and since its CPU burst time is 35, it will release the CPU at 35 and then if we give P1 the CPU, it will run for 20 time units because its time burst is 20. 
we see now over here that P1 has finished at time 55 but it had arrived in the system again at 50 that means its deadline which was at 50 has not been met. The P1 process has missed its deadline that is why we should take care that the scheduling should of the processes should be such that the processes do not meet the deadline and here it was specified that the deadline is that it should be complete before the start of its next period. Now let's take a look at the rate monotonic scheduling algorithm. So is it possible in any way that we schedule the task so that each of the processes meets its deadlines? So for doing this, we can measure the CPU utilization of a process. This is defined as the ratio of its burst to its period. So if it's, this is the CPU burst time of a real time process and this is the period. So T upon P is the CPU utilization of that process P. So if P1 for P1 since the CPU burst time was 20 and its period was 50. So its utilization was 0 0.40 for P2. T was 35 and period was 100 so CPU utilization is 0 0.35. If we add both of these we see that the total CPU utilization is 75 percent. So that means we can schedule the tasks and both will meet the deadlines and still leave the CPU with available cycles. So if a new process comes which requires few CPU cycles then the CPU will be able to schedule that particular process also. Now let us see how this rate monotonic scheduling is done. So this is the process P1 for this example we are considering that its period is 50 time is 20 for P2 its period is 100 and its CPU burst time is 35. Since period of P1 is shorter than that of P2, let us assign P1 a higher priority than P2. So that means P1 is having a higher priority because its time period is shorter than that of P2. So first assuming that both P1 and P2 were available in the system at time 0. So since P1 is having a higher priority, we will give the processor to P1 first. P1 will use the processor for 20 time units and release it after which this processor will be given to process P2. Now P2 the time required is 35 so it will run it is supposed to run for 35 time units but what will happen is that after running for 30 time units only at time 50 P1 will arrive again because the period of P1 is 50 P1 will arrive at every 50 time units. The period of process P2 is 100 so after 0 it will arrive only at 100 then at 200. So while P2 was running over here at time 50 P1 has arrived again in the system. And since P1 has a higher priority, so again P1 will be given the processor and it will run for 20 time units, finish off at 70. And now the P2 process which was preempted will be given the processor again. So only 5 time units were left, so it will run till 75 and release the processor. Now the processor is sitting idle over here because both the processes have been dealt with. Again at time 100 both processes P1 and P2 will arrive again in the system. As done over here again it will be first given to P1. P1 will finish. It will now be given to P2. P2 will again run for 30 time units but again it will be preempted by P1 which will arrive at 150 again. Now P1 will use the processor again for 20 time units and the remaining time 5 units of P2 will then be completed after that. 
So this will continue happening till the real time processes which are periodic they keep coming in the system. Now this rate monotonic scheduling it is considered to be optimal and if a set of processes they, if they cannot be scheduled by this algorithm then no other algorithm which assigns static priorities can schedule them. And if we ca compute the total CPU utilization we will see that 25 upon 50 which is the CPU utilization for process P1 plus 35 upon 80 here we are taking 80 as the time period then this is for P2 if we compute for this P1 and P2 it is coming out to be 94 percent that means we still have some cycles left for scheduling another process which comes in.